Good morning and welcome to Bethany Baptist Church. I'm so glad you are here this first Sunday of 2022. Winter has officially arrived at last. We are glad that you would worship with us this morning. We've got guests and family here. Uh, Please make yourself at home. It's a unique Sunday, but things that you can know, the restrooms are down the hallway to the right. We typically have nursery for children three and younger, but we won't this morning because it's a special Sunday. and We've got so many people involved in our service. So here is why this Sunday is special. Each year since I've been pastor at Bethany, we've tried to emphasize one spiritual discipline or tool that we can take home in our personal devotion time, family worship, and as a church. And 2021 was our year of scripture memorization. Scripture memorization. So each week for the last 52, we as a church have been trying to memorize one verse at a time from the entire chapter of Romans chapter 8. Perhaps the best chapter in all the Bible. And I'm so, I've been so proud and amazed at the participation in our church. Um, I I knew for sure at least my family might do it, and that would have been a win. Um, But there's so many of you, I would say over half of the church um, has participated in this in some way. And then all of you have participated each Sunday when we stood and recited together. Even if you weren't doing it in your own private time, I'm thankful that you enjoyed it with us um, by reciting. I loved hearing that. So encouraged, old and young alike, men and women memorizing in the translation or translation of their choice. And so this morning, we're going to celebrate that. We're going to celebrate our year of Scripture memory. So one way we're going to celebrate the year 2021 is we're going to sing four or five of our favorite songs, some that were reintroduced or some that are introduced for the first time. So if you're a guest, please feel free to sing along with us. The words will be on the screen. If you're not familiar with the tune, then please meditate on the words with us as well. And then instead of having all of our singing at the beginning and then a long sermon, a long sermon and the second half, we're going to change up the order. We'll sing two songs to begin with and then we're going to do this. So just to prepare you, it's a special Sunday, emphasis on scripture memory. We will get to hear from three different ladies in our church. They're going to do their best to recite a third of the entire chapter of Romans chapter 8. Now let me just go ahead and say this. That is the hardest thing to do. You see, when our preachers get up to preach, they're going to preach from their notes, first of all. And if they mess up, you'll never know, right? Because their speech is between them and God. But if these ladies accidentally stumble over a word or two, we should have absolute mercy on them, shouldn't we? And love, because we'll know when they messed up. So it's far a harder job. But we're, what we're looking for this morning is not perfection, any, any stretch of imagination. It's just celebration of God's Word. So don't just be listening. to Are they doing it right or not? Listening to God's Word. Hearing God's Word is a time of worship that these ladies will be leading us in. So we'll have a a lady recite a portion of Romans, and then we're going to have a a man from our church to give a short sermon or devotion for about 7 to 10 minutes on how Scripture memory has blessed them this year from Romans 8. We'll sing a song of response, and then we'll repeat that two more times. So we'll be getting up and getting down um, and hearing from three different men and three different women in Romans chapter 8. So unique Sunday, something special for ending 2021 and beginning 2022. So for our call to worship, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 1. This is the exact same psalm we began 2021 in as I pled with you to put God's Word in your heart through Scripture memory, and then we'll end with the same benediction we did just a year ago this Sunday. So Psalm chapter 1 is our call to worship. I want you to listen to these words of David about the Word of God. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 reads this way. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He or she is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. 
that you have firmly fixed it from the foundation of the world and not one jot or tittle, one I or comma will pass away until all is finished. Father, you've been kind to us in preserving your word and giving your Holy Spirit to your people that it would make sense, that it would be stored in our hearts. You've brought us through a very difficult year, another trial in the pandemic and trial in our community in the last couple of weeks. We thank you that your word remains. Father, I pray that your people would feel and would experience and recall to mind the blessings that have come from knowing you according to your word this year. As we inspect the fruit that you have caused to grow, as we have planted our lives in your word. I pray for those who do not know you, who your word has no place in their heart yet, who are being blown around by the storms of life and feel like chaff tossed to and fro that they would believe the gospel that they hear this morning and life and roots would go down deep. Father, we pray for our community in a, another week, another round of storms and suffering. Father, forgive us for not loving our neighbor and thinking about those around us who are suffering as much as we ought Change me. Change us. Grant us the compassion that you have for all of your creatures, all the people who have suffered through the tornadoes around us who are made in your image. Father, we, grant, we pray that you grant healing and restoration. We pray that you would open doors for ministry to the families that we are ministering to, that we would not only think about them and serve them, but through this you would cause a door for the gospel ministry to be opened, that they would want to know why we would do this, why we have such a hope. So would you take this bad and make it for good? We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. We're going to begin with a song from our Bible conference. Lance Parrott led us in a, t a song that comes from Psalm 130. I will wait for you. It is in the T4G book, the black book in front of you on page 60 if you want to follow along. I will wait for you. Let's sing together. <clears throat> depths I cry to you. In darkest places I will call. Incline your ear to me anew. And hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I
now he children learned Jesus strong and kind at VBS this year and taught it to us one Sunday. Um, so it's a great song, great truth. Um, Jesus strong and kind, the words will be on the screen for this one. Jesus said if I thirst I should I just want to say I never had enough confidence in myself that I could learn 39 verses of an entire chapter of the Bible. Um, I'm still working on the last few, but um, 
it's really renewed my confidence in what I what I can do. So hopefully I'll be able to memorize more and more scripture because of this. So this is Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who live according to the, who walk according to the flesh. Those who live according to the flesh, to the, I'm sorry. So the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in those who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although... The body is dead because of sin. The spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Good morning. If you want to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is on page 944 of the black book in the pew pew rack in front of you. If you'd like to read along with us. So this intentional scripture memorization has blessed my own life and my family's life this year. And so what I'd like to do this morning is just share a personal testimony about how memorizing chapter 8 has blessed and been good for my own life and our own marriage. Unpack a little bit this verse that we're going to point to and then just apply it to our lives very briefly. So my wife is a nurse. She works at the medical center. And, And one day she and I were talking after a long day of work, and it was a hard day. She had patients that were... Uh, difficult. They had new devices she had never used before. They had some issues she had never dealt with, and she was really stressed. It was a tough day. You could, you know, when you have a long day, you can just hear it in the person's voice. And she said she didn't know what to do. And so as we were unpacking that and talking about it, I had asked her, you know, did you ask the Lord for help? Did you, I mean, is this something that you had prayed about in the day? And she said, no, I didn't even know what to pray for. And it was in that moment that verse 26 of chapter 8 came to mind. So if you'll read with me, Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says to us this morning, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And the first thing that I want to tell you all about my own personal testimony this year is that God showed me in this work of memorization how easily Scripture came to mind. When she had mentioned the tough day, feeling weak, and then not knowing what to pray for, this verse came to mind. And as God does often in His providence, would you believe that this was the very verse we were working on memorizing this week? And so I thought, these are the words that need to be said right now. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The first thing that maybe that we should do when we don't know what to do, or that if we don't even know what to do, what to pray for, is to pray. 
carrying this idea from hand of not knowing what to do or not knowing what to pray for, I thought, uh, isn't that true even in my own life when there are things that, you know, I don't even know what the solution is. I don't know what to pray for. But this verse gives me confidence that the Spirit will help me in this weakness even when I do not know what to pray for. How beautiful that is. And even the fact that it recognizes that we are weak, a weak and needy people. That Paul, the church at Rome, that Christians all throughout history, and even you and I, we would have moments where we are weak. Where we would need even the Spirit's help to know what to pray for. Or the Spirit to pray for us. So the Spirit will help us in our weakness. It doesn't say it will help us become strong, that we will be invincible, but it helps us in our weakness. And for us, even in that moment, in that call we had that day, how it just renewed our love for prayer. That God would help us in our weakness. And then is this some accident? That, you know, we just stumbled upon the Spirit and now we have this strength in prayer. That even when we don't know what to pray for, He will pray for us instead. Look with me at verse 27. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Well, what is the will of God? I thought we might use Ephesians 2.10 to help us answer this question and then tie them together. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, says to us, Galatians, Ephesians... For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So what is the will of God? That we should walk in the good works that he has prepared for us. So take heart. God has prepared good works that we should walk in him. And he has willed the Holy Spirit to intercede for the saints. So be quick to pray. When there's a deadline at work and you don't know how you will make it, be quick to pray. When something breaks at home or work, be quick to pray. When you're fighting with your spouse and you don't know how to feel, you don't know how to make amends, be quick to pray. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Why is it that such a weak and needy people have such a strong helper? Read with me in verse 3 of the same chapter, Romans chapter 8. It was just recited to us. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Next thing I want us to say is that this was not free. That it cost the blood of our Savior for a weak and needy people to have such a strong helper. But what does this do for the believer? Look with me further on in verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, this is a gift of God through Christ that the spirit would help us, us, you and me today, in our weakness. So first, be quick to pray. I know in my own life, I'm always quick to solve, right? There's a problem, fix it. If I don't know the answer, work harder, find it. Quick to solve, quick to solve, quick to solve. I think the Lord showed me this year, be quick to pray. And next, encourage others to pray. You may deal with people with problems or any issues as you help counsel others. Help them be quick to pray. Let us, Bethany, be a church that is quick to pray. For Christ died for this awesome gift. The Spirit helps us in our weakness.
Let's stand. We're going to sing Now Why This Fear, another song we have learned this year. Perfect fitting for uh, Romans 8, child of God. You're in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation, no need to fear or, have, or not believe. Um, let's sing this song. <clears throat> fear and unbelief is not the Father put to grief spot the Son for us and will the righteous judge of men and before that dead of sin now cancel at the
Verse 3. Let's sing verse 3 again. Be still, my soul, and know this peace, the merits of your great high priest have bought your liberty. Rely then on his precious blood. Don't fear your banishment from God. Since Jesus set you free. Jesus, all my trust. Jesus, all my trust is in your blood. Jesus, you've read. morning. Uh, my section is Romans 8, 12 through 25. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were, sa- we were, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, We wait for it with patience. Told the pastor, I said, I might be good to go last, be the cleanup batter, to give everybody some hope. He said, I'm gonna put you in the middle. We're going to have the young, then we're going to have the old. He mentioned that word old. And then we're going to have the young. So today, uh, I'll just do the best that I can with what I have to work with. See, I've never been in a church where the pastor really promoted memorizing scriptures, especially as a whole chapter. Just never participated in a church like that. Uh, I've always heard my preachers, other than Brother Lucas, uh, I've always heard my preachers quote a verse or two together, but that's about it at one time. And for the most part, that's about where I'm at, uh, at best. I've had friends that uh, can quote scriptures from time to time when they need them. I, I'm amazed at how they're able to just draw those scriptures in and the situations in their life when they're able to, to pull on that. And I, I witness that, and I'm like, wow, that's wish I could do that, you know. And uh, But when Pastor Lucas challenged us as a whole church to memorize the whole chapter of Romans 8, I immediately shut down, just like that, just shut down. Now, what I want you to watch here is how Satan works. You go back till I was in the third grade. Couldn't retain what I read. Had a trouble learning. So finally, my third grade teacher, which was one of the worst teachers I ever had in my life, 
really was. <laughs> she didn't have any people skills at all, you know. The kid's an idiot. So mom took me to uh, some reading classes, uh, kind of evaluation things at Western. Well, that was pretty nervous for me. Third grade, you know, I go to Western up on a big hill and go to this room, a little room. I can remember going up several floors up on an elevator and then going down these long halls and into just like a closet. I mean, it was so small. Went there and sat down with somebody that I didn't know and my mother beside me and they hand me this stuff and I'm supposed to read it. Well, I'm not a good reader. See, what, I, what you didn't, what y'all don't know is I deal with something called dyslexia. So back in those days, 53 or four years ago, they didn't know what that was. Rita teaches classes on people with trouble with dyslexia now. So I dealt with that and didn't know what it was. So come out of all those, all that stuff, and basically they just labeled me, for lack of a better term, retarded, meaning I just couldn't retain what I would read, and I would try to read backwards and stuff. My grandkids are laughing over here because they know I'm retarded. <laughs> But so my whole life, Satan has used this tool against me. He, every, everything I come up against, he always used it against me. You can't do it because of this and that. He, he erodes my life with it. So when Pastor Lucas asked me to memorize Romans 8, my, my weakness came forward real quick and says, there's no sense in trying. You can't do it. So that's, that's how I started with his thought pattern when he asked us to do that. But now pay attention to what happened. A scripture came to me. For he who is in the world is greater. I mean, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That was probably a few days after that, maybe, that he asked us to do that. Another scripture came to mind. I can do all things through him who can strengthen me, or Christ who strengthens me. What is that? That was actually a recall of First John 4.4 4 and Romans 4.13. I mean, uh, Philippians 4.13. That was recall. So I, I did have some of that, see. So, you see, what the Holy Spirit that serves me, what he did was he showed me that I had enough recall that I could do more and that he would be with me. Those two scriptures. So I was able to recall. So when people, you know, stand up here and do what they do, it's tough. But praise God that that recall is there when we need it for so much. Like so many of you, I began the journey, which was tough, fighting my dyslexia, fighting Satan, and trying to train my tongue to speak in patterns of biblical language, like, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jordan, you spoke about that in our first week. You came forward with that. And you mentioned, you said, I am having so much trouble with there is therefore now no condemnation. He said, I, my, my tongue just don't want it. Do you remember saying that? You did. Because I was listening. <laughs> I'm thinking, I can't get there is therefore. It just makes no sense to me. How do you put these away? If you just read there is therefore now no and stop there, what do you have? Uh, I don't know. My English is so bad. My dyslexia, everything's like, okay, so what? Where do you go from there, you know? But it goes, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the sin and death. For God has done what the spirit, for what the law could not do. I mean, these words begin to come and I begin to think of these things. I, thought, I can get it a little bit and I would go along and, and it began to come a little bit. But Jordan, you encouraged me big time because you helped me at a time when I was ready to give up because I already knew I couldn't do it anyway. But you were there to help me do that. So each day, each week, it was good enough for me to stretch myself and it was good for me. And preacher, I thank you for that because you caused me to get outside my box and begin to do that. Uh, and I made it very well through about the first 10 verses uh, of Romans 10. And then my life changed. Uh, mother had to have a knee replacement. I basically moved in with her in March and stayed there for a lot over the next nine months. And my Bible reading study time was just totally different and changed. And I couldn't focus and stuff like that. Continued to read, continued to work on this, but I didn't have the discipline to take to do it and put it together as a church like the rest of y'all worked that time. Then the preacher asked me uh, to do this, what I'm doing today, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I guess. And I said no. And so when I said no, I actually um, sent him a little text. And it said, uh, up to my first week of March, 
I was doing pretty well with the first 10 verses, but after that I had to take care of mom for the next nine months and lost my age. Just wasn't enough for me to go around and get it done. I would feel a bit of a hypocrite uh, to stand before the church and lead them to believe that I had accomplished this whole chapter. I didn't want to fall dead at the doors of the church like those who lied about how much they'd given <laughs> Ananias, is that right? And Sapphira. Sapphira. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't read well. I didn't want to fall dead, you know. I, so I said, no, I better give him an excuse, you know. And, uh, but I said, but I am blessed in the early weeks to know that, I'm, that I could memorize some scripture my age and with my inability to recall what I read. And I'm also blessed to see many within the church working together to accomplish it. Many of you people stood up and did things early on or, or from the pews. You did it when he would ask you to do it. Mostly the women and y'all were wonderful. And I was jealous. And really blessed, though, to hear the children get it pretty much verbatim. When I could hear the kids, they were nailing it. And they were ahead of us most of the time. They were just looking at each other, and they were still playing and doing whatever they do, and quoting it. I'm thinking, do they even know what they're saying? I don't know. But thank you, I said, but thank you for leading the body to get outside their boxes. That's the text that I sent Brother Lucas. That was my excuses. But you see, the main point of my journey through this was Satan lost. He lost this battle. There'll be others, but he lost this one. Um, I wasn't able to complete the challenge, but I grew. Now, the reason I ended up doing this today is not <laughs> because when I was typing that text to our pastor, the spirit in me was saying, that's not what I want you to do. And I still typed it, still sent it, because this is what I wanted to not do because of my weakness. And that spirit inside me convicted me. So it wasn't but uh, on the last Wednesday night or something like that, we were sitting around here hanging around the church after a little while. Shouldn't hang around late, you'll get asked again, you know. So he leans over the pew and he says, uh, Brother, he said, I'd really like for you to reconsider. Uh, he said, I'd like to get some of the people that we normally don't hear from up there. And he said, or again, he used that word older again, somebody from the older group that, that participated in it. I said, yes. He was kind of surprised, I think, at how quick I ended up uh, saying yes to that because I was already convicted. God had already told me there's people in the congregation that started the journey that didn't finish it, couldn't finish it for whatever the reasons were. And that I needed to get up there and be bold enough to say it was me. I did that. I'm guilty. But I still grew. Still blessed. All this is still there. So, okay. That's kind of my testimony. Now, I think we for just a bit. Why, if we're going to memorize the Bible, why didn't the preacher just have us to start in Genesis? Think, man. Why didn't he do that? I mean, if we're going to memorize the Bible, and we're going to be able to be like Moses and sit down and write five of the, of the Bible, you know. We could boast in that. Just start the beginning. We'd be a church that says we memorized the Bible. We could boast in that a little bit. Why didn't pastor just have us to memorize Revelations? So he could maybe use the Scriptures to kind of scare us a little bit into submission to the what the Spirit wants us to do. Revelation can have some scary... I've heard him speak on that. He doesn't really want to preach Revelation because it's so vast. It's a tough one. Why not uh, some of the beautiful Psalms as Brother Lucas talks about? He loves the Psalms. Why don't he have us to memorize some of those Psalms that are just so soothing and, and just kind of woo us along? And they're shorter too and not quite as long. and Sometimes maybe easier to read. Why Romans? Why Paul's writings? Why chapter 8? Why the whole chapter? Hunter started off with a why. Part of his first word was why. Why about these things? Why, did, why is it all designed for that? Well, why not just uh, 828? 
We all know 848 pretty well. We use that a lot. Why not just under talk about 826? He's interceding on our behalf with, with, with groanings deeper than words can even explain. Why not some of those? Why did he have us to mop the whole chapter? Well, I don't pretend to know the answers, but I know that when I read and reread over and over, um, it, it drills into my mind. When I continue to read, there is therefore now no condemnation. When I continue to read all those scriptures and get, and get some of them, it drills into my mind the, the fact that the mind is either is is where either good or evil thoughts start. And you see, when it says here, it says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the things of flesh is death, but to set the mind on the thing of the Spirit. In me, so that together we can be encouraged just in God's faithfulness. So on the practical side, I mostly attribute being able to make it through all 39 verses, not because I have great mental resolve or because I'm real disciplined or because I even was convinced all the time of the good of what I was doing. I mostly attribute it because when we sat down for dinner every night, we said, what's our verse this week? And so we said it again. And tomorrow dinner, we said it again. So we worked it into what was already there. Um, you have moments like this that are just worked into the routine that you can just weave it into the regular routine of life. Driving to work, brushing your teeth, walking to the mailbox. In Deuteronomy 6, God proclaims himself to his people. He says, love me, walk in my ways, have my word in your heart. And then you know what he does? He gives practical things just like this. He says, when you're getting up in the mundane routine of life, put the word of God there. Put sticky notes on your gates and doorposts. They didn't have sticky notes then, but he said, put it there so that every day, just in the routine. So that, that was a great encouragement to me. It wasn't because I was like, I'm going to be so disciplined this year to memorize this chapter. It's because I said it four to six times a week just because it was in our routine. So th uh, that is just a tool that, um, that we're going to continue that same kind of pattern. Even saying on Sundays and Wednesday, Wednesday nights helped me. Um, so God knows we need everyday rhythms, just simple, mundane, but redeemed for the glory of God. Another help was that everything is easier with brothers and sisters doing it with you. I constantly have to push against this individualistic Christian life. That's me and God and I'm doing this thing. Th that is so foreign to the New Testament. We need our brothers and sisters. We walk this road together. And just saying it every week over and over, knowing that we're all doing this together, um, I saw the great benefit in that. So uh, we, we plan to kind of continue this. We've already picked another passage. But the first thing we did was we started asking people to do it with us. We're walking together in this, in this road. And having a brother or sister will only help you. So look, if you're, I hope you're planning to keep this uh, habit going. Look to your brother on your right or your sister on your left. They want to be an encouragement to you. And they need to be encouraged. Um, so those are a couple uh, hows, just practical things that were helpful for me in memorizing. Uh, but after this year in Romans 8, more of the why. Why was it worth doing? Why do I want to keep it going now? Um, the main reason is I saw that God often gives light in this process. Uh, illumination. Literally, you look at a verse, you look at a passage, and all you see is darkness. You don't understand it. You're not getting it. Or you may understand what it means, but it's all here. It hasn't affected your heart. You just... It's like it's impenetrable. Well, what normally happens is you read it and you didn't get it, and you, so you put your Bible down and you go to the next chapter or verse tomorrow. But this year, we read it, and we read it again, and then we said it again, and then you said it again and again and again. And still in the 32nd time, you just said, I just wasn't getting anything. But sometimes on that 33rd time, light. God will give light like he did for Nelson where something just all of a sudden 
God, by His Spirit, guides us in light and truth. And He brings um, things to understanding. So mentally, theologically, I feel like I understand grace and adoption. But practically, I struggle every week spending time earning my way so that God would, would, would be pleased with me. Or fearing all week that I just, I'm not living up. God's going to reject me. He's going to push me aside. And so, you, but this, you, you read this chap, chapter 8 in Romans, you read it a hundred times, you say it 50 times, and you see Paul, that is the struggling Christian that Paul is talking to. There is therefore now no condemnation. Jordan, hear that. Do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into that fear. You have received the spirit of adoption as a son. You cry, Abba, Father. Who is to condemn? Who is to condemn you? So just saying it over and over, I was brought to much more gospel freedom. And I think that happens. It says you're in the word, meditating day and night in that way. And when God turns lights on like that, it becomes bread. That's, that's what that means in Isaiah 55. Your soul is fed. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 2021, there's lots of ups and downs, struggles, tragedies, decisions. And the people of God find their sustenance from God Himself through His Word. Romans 8, I feel like, gave, gave direction to my faith this year. Um, especially after, after t- uh, miscarrying um, the second time. Romans 8 says the creation was subjected to fut- futility. That, that makes sense. The world is broken. There is suffering. It is true. But God rules over the brokenness for our good. So just driving home to tell tell our kids the second second time there was no heartbeat. Uh, Like what to say to them, how to say it. Those words were in my mind then. They wouldn't have been there if I hadn't been memorizing Romans 8. That all things. Yes. All things. All things work together for good. He who gave up his son. I can trust him. He gave up his son for me. I can trust he will give me every good thing. Um, But then also... As God gives you this kind of bread, as He's illumining passages, because you thought on, thought on, thought on, uh, a lot of times it's not just going to end in you. God's ways are higher than ours, His thoughts are higher, and it's going to go beyond you. So He means for your good, but He means for good for the people around you. Seed for the sower. Uh, we we uh, kind of talked about how God had met us this year, us this year in His Word for different different ways and our um, sister Valerie she she said this she was memorizing and just wasn't clicking a verse was struggling and then right at the right moment a child of hers needed a word from the Lord it was fitting and right and she had it she had the word to give she had the seed for a hungry son or daughter you might memorize and not much, there are plenty of weeks you didn't get anything from it. But there's going to be a son. There's going to be a daughter. There's going to be a parent. There is going to be a neighbor, a co-worker. And you could have the seed in your hand to give them right when their soul needs nourishment. So memorize. If, if, you, if you try this year, don't say to 2021. That's not something I would you might need it for those around you this year. You'll need it for your own soul, but for those around you. Um, so there's just a couple of encouragements uh, from my year.
Let's stand. It is well with my soul. Hymn 447. <clears throat> It is indeed well with your soul. It's well with my soul this morning. I'm so honored to be a part of the bride at Bethany Baptist Church and to be called your pastor. I'm so encouraged the music this morning, our musicians, uh, the ladies did excellent in scripture memory. The hardest, I think, task this morning. Faithful and men for sharing from your heart. Church for being here and being a part of this has been a group effort 
and a blessing to the group. So, so, so thankful for you guys. I hope you'll come back next Sunday as we continue uh, with a new tool for 2022 and continue in God's Word. A couple of announcements real quick before I give you your benediction. The first is if you're interested in being part of a ladies' fellowship event, it'll be a special painting time uh, gathering uh, January the 15th. That's a Saturday. Just see Rita. Miss Rita, raise your hand again real high. That's right. And uh, see her or my wife, Meredith, if you'd like to be a part of that. That is uh, free to guests uh, especially. Uh, also, I'm proud to say that um, our church has been great at giving regularly for our tithes and offerings. Again, there's a chance to do that as you leave, worship as you go uh, in the boxes there. But we raised over $500 above and beyond our regular tithes and offerings for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So thank you. That's the best it's been in the last three or four years. So thank you for not just loving missions and prayer and with your mouth. Um, but in, in giving and worshiping that way. So I'm thankful to be a part of this church. Uh, there's a couple opportunities to serve Monday, conversational English here at 5 o'clock to help a Vietnamese family. If you'd like to go with the Begleys to minister to the Afghanistan refugees, also fr- uh, Monday at 5 um, p.m. see Jordan or Brooke if you'd like to be a part of that. And then we've got a meal train going for a Bosnian family that lost everything in the tornadoes recently. If you'd like to be a part of that meal train to have a meal ordered to their house or deliver it yourself to the hotel, excuse me, they're staying at please see myself or Meredith, um, anyone that has access to that mill train. So thank you for being here this morning. Here is your benediction, the same one that we had a year ago today. This is a promise to those who are in Christ. Um, from John chapter 14, verse 22, one of his disciples asked Jesus, oh Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. Listen, church. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. Amen. You are dismissed.